Leave it 5 one turn right heading 180. one four Papa, turn right 245, report localised established 27. It's been a very slow start to the week with no major breakout stories taking place. However, when lots of little developments occur, it always makes for a good Aviation News Weekly, which is now turned almost daily, given one was also published yesterday. With that being said, for plane spotting images and general discussion, feel free to head over to my Twitter, which is at DJ's Aviation. A lot of you have come across from the videos, and it's awesome interacting with you over there. Beginning today's Aviation News Weekly with some dire financial results over at Delta, who announced their Q3 results, which are pretty bleak. This is something you'd be already able to imagine. However, now we have the firm confirmation with numbers, and it truly highlights that. Delta has announced a pre-tax loss of some US $6.9 billion on revenue that totals at US $3.1 billion, however with an adjusted pre-tax loss of US $2.6 billion. Ultimately, the adjusted revenue which is at US $2.6 billion is a decline of 79% over the prior year. Delta is slowly improving over their Q2 results, however this situation is still as mentioned earlier bleak. It's not exactly a pleasant position that they find themselves in, to say the least. The carrier is lucky, though, that it has something a number of airlines aren't able to have, and that's a solid amount of liquidity, which stands currently at the end of the September quarter, so Q3, at US $21.6 billion. However, cash burn each day averaged at US $24 million for Q3, but just for each day in September, it was lower at US $18 million. Delta also provided a spreadsheet that highlights when specific types will be leaving the fleet and at the time of recording and time of the press release, how many of each is still remaining or was in their fleet. The carrier will have phased out some 383 aircraft come the end of 2025, with aircraft types like the 777, 767, MD-90, A320, CRJ-200 and more all on the chopping board in order to keep the airline as efficient as possible moving forward with the adjusted demand. The Delta CEO said, While our September quarter results demonstrate the magnitude of the pandemic on our business, we have been encouraged as more customers travel and we are seeing a path of progressive improvement in our revenues, financial results and daily cash burn. The actions we are taking now to take care of our people, simplify our fleet and strengthen our brand will allow Delta to accelerate into a post-COVID recovery. And I personally wish Delta all the best as I'm sure all of you watching do as well. Lufthansa announced some changes to its winter timetable, which runs through to the end of March in 2021. And this will see four Airbus A350-900s that are parked be brought back to life and serve destinations in the United States from its hub in Frankfurt. These are flights that will see the A350s replacing those 7478s, which would have been flying these routes for the period of time, as mentioning through to March of next year. Finally, on top of this, the A350 will also be placed on the Frankfurt to Tokyo service in place of the A340. Decisions that will highlight the return of some services for nationals and permitting restrictions on international travel, the absentees are the likes of the A340 which has been retired, and the 7478, which while is staying on within their fleet, is deemed like the A340 and A380 as not the most efficient option for these services moving forward. When focusing on the A350 fleet, it consists of 16 Munich-based aircraft. However, as they note in their press release, due to the massive reduction in travel demand, they will initially fly short of half of that at just seven A350s and will base them out at Munich on services through to North America and Asia, the ones I mentioned. That could potentially grow. It's just going to depend on how the industry moves as well as demand to specific destinations. Moving across now to the Canadian aviation sector, there's been an update surrounding the purchase of Air Transit by Air Canada. This was announced back in June of 2019, and at the time, Air Canada was going to be paying some $13 per share, with a total purchase price of around $520 million. However, that was only their initial offer, and this was eventually upped to some $720 million, with them paying $18 per share. With the global pandemic now impacting things greatly, Air Canada is saving quite a lot of money. They'll be wiping some $8 off each share from their initial offer to Air Transit and now pay $5 per share with the total value of the purchase for the airline being at $190 million. The negotiations are natural as Air Canada had not actually finalised their deal with Air Transit, so there was always going to be room for things to adjust. However, with the global pandemic... 
I think personally, it'd be pretty safe to assume that the savings naturally would not amount to what they've done had this not been going on. The Air Canada CEO commented on the deal saying the following in a press release. The global pandemic, I could not say what I want to say because I will get demonetized, has had a devastating effect on the global aviation industry with a material impact on the value of airlines and aviation assets. This combination will provide stability for Air Transit's operations and its stakeholders and will position Air Canada and indeed the Canadian aviation industry to emerge more strongly as we enter the post-global pandemic world. It's a move that seems to benefit Air Canada and obviously the staff at Air Transit, as many would ponder just how the airline would survive by itself. As for how Air Canada uses this new acquisition, it still remains to be seen officially. But if you have any thoughts, don't hesitate to drop them below. Moving back to Australia, the country has announced that it's planning on keeping its borders closed to international travel for essentially another year. That meaning they'll keep all international borders closed through the end of 2021, while also allowing citizens to come back home gradually. But again, that will depend greatly on the caps into each set state, as there'll be a 14-day quarantine period in hotels for any resident that is wishing to come home. The country closed its borders back in March of 2020. Travel bubbles are likely going to occur between Australia and New Zealand, but other than that, say tourists coming from America or Europe will simply be refused entry, so that will not be happening anytime soon unless things develop in regards to a cure. Thank you very much once again for the continued support you've been showing here on the channel and especially on Aviation News Weekly. I do quite enjoy making this type of video for you all, so just by you tuning in and nothing else, it does really mean a lot. I hope you're all continuing to stay safe and so on, and if you ever need someone to talk to, you're more than welcome to drop me a tweet or email and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Until the next video, stay safe, and I'll see you all next time.